We are counting down to the start of Donald Trump's first criminal trial tomorrow in New York. And joining me now is legal advisor to the case's star witness, Michael Cohen, Lanny Davis. Thank you so much for joining me on set. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So, Lanny, we, we've seen this movie before. I mean, you could argue you were in the first movie, um, as some might say. Uh, the charges are different, but the underlying facts, of course, in Cohen's federal case back in 2018 are essentially the same facts now. Why is that? What do those parallels tell us? Well, first, that federal prosecutors who worked for Donald Trump's Justice Department found that he directed Michael Cohen to do the crime, paying money for political reasons right towards the end of the 2016 election. That makes it a crime. Mm -hmm. The federal prosecutors in New York who work for his Justice Department found that he directed, that's the word they used, Cohen to do the crime. Mm -hmm. Somebody who directs somebody to do a crime that federal prosecutors say those facts are true. Of course, they have to be introduced into evidence mm -hmm. in this trial, but the same facts must be guilty of the same crime. Hard to imagine not, as a non-lawyer, but you're a lawyer telling me that. Trump, I, I just started out talking about this a little bit. I mean, Trump has been attacking everyone involved in this, including repeatedly Michael Cohen. He attacked him yesterday. It seems like it's a violation of the gag order, but I'm not the expert on that. What, what should Judge Mershon do in this particular case of his attacks on Cohen? So I think the judge has handled this, uh, as all the judges who have been attacked by Mr. Trump, uh, by virtually ignoring and trying to impose a gag order, which is not possible. The fact Because Trump can't be gagged? Well, he, he would be uh, very difficult to put in jail an ex-president. Mm -hmm. I would not favor that. So it's very hard to discipline him. Mm -hmm. But our jury system is imperfect. There may be biased jurors one way or the other. Mm -hmm. But we've lived with the jury system going back to England before we became a country. And this jury system will determine what the facts are based on the evidence. He's entitled to the presumption of innocence. As far as I'm concerned, he's innocent until 12 people say he's guilty. But the facts are the facts. And Mr. Trump has a hard time with facts. He denies facts, but he can't in a courtroom. Twelve people will hear those facts. Jury of his peers. That's how our legal system works. So I want to dig into the specifics here because you are an expert on them and familiar, and we're going to be talking about this case for the next several weeks. It is historic. Now, a key component of the DA's case is obviously Trump's reimbursement to Cohen for the payoff to Daniels, which Trump claimed were payments for legal fees. I will point out that the judge in Cohen's case agreed with federal prosecutors back in 2018 that Trump did agree to reimburse Cohen and, quote, then falsely accounted for these payments as legal expenses, essentially calling him out for his bluff, lie, whatever you want to call it there. Do you think Trump's defense team is going to try to argue this again, the same argument? Impossible, because the facts are the facts. Number one, Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, oops, told the truth on Fox and said they were reimbursements mm. of illegal payments. The word illegal is my word, mm -hmm. but they were motivated at the end of election. But Rudy Giuliani said reimbursements. Apart from that, federal prosecutors did an ample investigation, and they found in writing in a public document there were reimbursements for what they found to be illegal, politically motivated payments. And one other point, Jen, mm. people disparage this case about sex and hush money. Mm. What did federal prosecutors say? What did the judge say? This case is about impairing democracy mm -hmm. because allowing, this is out of their memorandum, allowing wealthy people to prevent information the American people need to vote for president is what happened here. So it's about democracy. It's not about hush money. It's this is such an important point. It's holding back. It was holding back information right from the American public at a pretty pivotal time. Now, Trump has claimed over the past couple of days, yesterday, I think, even, that he's willing to testify. Uh -huh. um, to, to the point of your earlier point about the legal payments, I mean, Trump also tweeted, admitted in a tweet, that the payments to Cohen were, Cohen were actually reimbursements relating to a non-disclosure agreement. So there's a tweet for everything, as we like to say. Do you think there's a scenario where he actually testifies? And is that basically in a courtroom a gift to the prosecutors? Let me get this straight. He said publicly, I would testify. And then someone's going to say he didn't say will testify. We saw him on Air Force One at the time that Michael Cohen was first involved in this matter, saying he's just my lawyer. I don't know mm -hmm. anything. So the record for Donald Trump telling the truth, let's hope now he's telling the truth. His supporters out there heard him say, I would testify. I would say, please, Mr. Trump, testify. You know Trump's defense team, you know this well, is going to attack Michael Cohen's credibility. Obviously, Trump started to do that. There's a lot of other witnesses here. Who's most interesting to you? Uh, who's most impactful for the prosecution? David Pecker. 
Mm -hmm. Michael Cohen's credibility was tested under the same lawyers, uh, different lawyers, but the same Trump advocates, cross-examined in New York State Supreme Court. Brutal cross-examination. The judge heard everything and found Michael Trump, Michael Cohen, to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. So he's already passed that test. But David Pecker is a second witness. The federal prosecutors wrote that David Pecker, the publisher of National Enquirer, met MET mm -hmm. with Mr. Trump, and they reached an agreement. He would pay $150,000 to Karen McDougal, former Playmate of the Month, mm -hmm. so that she wouldn't come out right before the election, so the American people wouldn't know about that affair. And Pecker said and met with Trump that Trump promised to repay him. It's a completely separate narrative that the American people are not aware of. They only know about Michael Cohen. You notice Mr. Trump has not attacked his close friend, Mr. Pecker. He, he has not. That's interesting to note. So before I let you go, I wanted to ask you, I mean, prison time is on the table here. There are sentencing guidelines. Um, and I would note that Judge Mershon said last year that he regretted agreeing to a five-month sentence for Trump company CFO Alan Weisselberg for tax crimes, saying he would have imposed a harsher punishment. We never know what a judge is going to decide. Of course, you know that well. But is it conceivable for people watching out there that if he's convicted, Trump could go to jail for this? He most certainly will go to jail for this because he can't pardon himself. Let me repeat this. He's going to, if he's elected president, I hope that won't take place. He says he will, can pardon himself and he probably will try, but he cannot it's a pardon. State. Yeah. He cannot pardon a criminal conviction by a jury of a state crime. He must go to jail. I would not favor putting him behind bars. I would favor a house arrest something less than behind bars because he's an ex-president. But there's no question he will be incarcerated either in house arrest or behind bars if he's convicted. Lanny Davis, thank you for bringing all your knowledge about this case you, um, to us this afternoon. I really appreciate you joining thank me. You. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.